So in this video here, what we're gonna go over is one of the biggest problems that my clients have every single day and it's what I see as the number one issue for people that are running ads right now that aren't able to quite get over that hump in terms of their scale. Like you get to a certain point and for people, everybody it's a little bit different, but for most it's somewhere up to about $1,000 a day. And when you try to push beyond that point, you can't quite keep the ROIs there or keep the ROAS there and things kind of fall apart and you're left scrambling. And a lot of it has to do with what I see as far as how people are making decisions inside of the campaigns. And that's what they're coming to me for. All of my clients were able to take them past that hump by allowing them to see things a little bit differently and have a framework that they can use to go through to optimize their campaigns and make these decisions because oftentimes people know all the different things that they can do, but what they don't know is what to do when and why. And so what we're gonna do here is go through a six step framework that I give to my clients here um, and I'm gonna walk you through it on the screen as well through my own account live right now to kind of explain how this all works. All right, now before we get into the nitty gritty of all that, I wanna talk about the first step and back this up a little bit here. So the first step, and you may not be able to see this on, on the screen, we're gonna edit this and put some uh, you know, stuff in here. Um, but uh, the, the first thing you wanna do before you ever even run your campaign is you wanna establish your KPIs. Now if you're an in, in established advertiser, then you should know what that is. If you don't and you're watching this, that stands for Key Performance Indicator. Those are the metrics that you need to achieve in your campaign in order to hit the profitability margins that you're looking for. Now, for our students at academyofadvertising.com, we have developed a formula that I call the Guaranteed Profitability Formula. And myself, along with a PhD named Eileen McGurdy, we developed out what I believe is the most killer spreadsheet for generating your guaranteed profitability formula and figuring out these KPIs. Um, we've had this in place for years and years and years now, and many people have modeled it. And what you can do is you can actually just punch in some numbers from your funnel and your product price points and your cogs and all of that, no matter what business model you're in, and it'll tell you exactly how much you can spend on a click, what your conversion rates need to be, and you can play around with those numbers so that you know when you launch your campaigns where you need to be at with your different metrics that you're measuring inside of your campaign so that you know whether you're successful or not. All right, so that's always the key first step and I wanna make sure that's clear is that you establish those KPIs and you can, you can figure those out. There's a lot of tools out there. We provide one for you. You can look that up at academyofadvertising.com. Right, now the second thing here is you have to validate your data. All right, now what the heck does that mean? Well, one of the hugest mistakes I see people making and I see even experienced advertisers making this mistake is relying on the data that Facebook is showing you in your ads manager and assuming that that's gospel truth and it's 100% accurate. I've been doing this for years and years and years. We've been focusing on Facebook exclusively since 2013. Very rarely, and we've worked with over 158 agency clients now, have we ever had that number be 100% accurate. There are some circumstances where it's highly accurate Usually in e-commerce with Shopify and with special plugins like Trackify, you can get this data inside of here to be very accurate. But in most cases, there's going to be a discrepancy in that data and those discrepancies are getting more and more and more today due to tracking issues with um, pixels being blocked and ad blockers and all this different stuff. People clearing the cookies, they're more advanced now. These things aren't working. So one of the one of the things that you'll see quite frequently, and we're experiencing this more and more, our clients are reporting it, we're seeing it in our accounts, and I'm gonna demonstrate it here on the screen to you in a moment. You can see how the, the, the pixel will pick up the events firing it when you look at the actual pixel, but the conversion event will not fire off inside of the campaign. And so it's very hard to see all of the different sales that are actually happening or if your leads are accurate. So these, these numbers aren't always accurate for a variety of different reasons. And so what you have to do is you have to actually validate that data against the bottom line. Now, if you go, I'm gonna to turn to the screen here, and this is one of my campaigns that I'm running right now. Now, this is my uh, current month. And what 
we do is we track our buyers here with this AOA buyer uh, tag. Now, this was actually showing one sale tracked to this month just yesterday, and it had been showing for the rest of the month, um, and for some reason it's not. Now, we've actually had four sales this month already of this product. None of those sales are being tracked back here, but the only way we've been promoting it is through advertising. These campaigns that we're running are the only way people have been able to see this particular promotion. And so what we can do is we can actually go here and we're gonna open up the uh, analytics here and we'll take a look at the pixel. I'm gonna even open up this pixels one here. And we can see those custom conversions, they're actually firing. Okay, so you can see here, now coming back on December 6th, it fired four times, two, two, these are extra fires, but you see that it's getting, it's had, it's saying that it's tracked 21 conversions. Now we know that's not right because what I've done is I've validated my data and how I validate my data is I go into my bottom line systems, in this case, my CRM, and I actually look at my legit sales and that's my bottom line. So I'm always comparing what I'm seeing here. So you're gonna get a variety of different figures. For some reason, this is hitting, this is showing 21 in the last seven days. I know I haven't had 21 sales this month. Now, why does that occur? Well, people bookmark the page. They can get there from other places somehow. Emails happen. There's a variety of different ways that people can revisit the page and you're gonna see multiple fires here. And you know, when you're looking at this, Facebook thinks, you know what, what you think is based on this that that's actually a conversion that is picking up but then when you're in the actual campaign here none of those are tracking and we're looking at the same time frame here okay so this is quite common and this is why you need to validate your data and why you can't take what you're seeing inside of Facebook as gospel truth many people do and they would assume this campaign is not making money but what we do when we run this in our back end systems, we're actually about break even with this campaign and with the way that this campaign is structured, that's actually ends up being profitable for us because we have lifetime customer values that kick in. I know if, that, if I'm break even day one to my ad spend, then I'm gonna make money long term by servicing my customers well and offering them other things that I do, okay? So this is why you can't take that stuff as gospel truth and you always gotta validate your data so that you know what you're looking at in here is accurate before you make decisions in your campaign. Otherwise, if you don't know the accuracy of your data, you are actually making ill-informed decisions. And I see people oftentimes kill campaigns that are profitable and they're scaling campaigns that are non-profitable because we've, we've seen the discrepancy be as wide as It'll over-report three times or under-report half. And anywhere in that range. And there's a variety of reasons for that. The, the, you don't need to know exactly why. You just need to know that it does happen. And you gotta validate your data. Now what we'll do is we oftentimes will find a discrepancy. And then what we do is we accommodate for the discrepancy when we're looking at our KPIs and we're, we're validating our data here. So let me give you a concrete example of that. Now let's say we discover that our Facebook pixel is only showing half of the sales that we really have, okay? So if I'm trying to get a KPI for my cost per acquisition or my cost to acquire a customer, a sale, if I'm trying to get that at $10 and Facebook is only showing me half of the conversions, then by the Facebook data, I can actually optimize my campaign up to $20 a conversion by Facebook's data because it's only showing me half of the conversions. Okay, so we can modify how we're looking at this stuff based on the discrepancy. Now, if it was in the reverse and it was showing me twice as many sales, then I would have to optimize down to $5 to obtain a $10 CPA, right? So you see how depending on the accuracy of your data, it's going to highly, highly, highly influence your decision making in the campaigns and whether your decision is right or not that you're making and just in terms of whether you're scaling or even turning stuff on or off, which are huge impacts on the campaigns and why I see a lot of people messing up their campaigns. All right now, 
once we've done all this stuff, and I'll tell you right now, and you can see on my screen here, I've already validated all my data. The interesting piece here is my leads are within 95% accurate. So that always tracks accurate, very, very, very accurately for me. And I, I assume because it's so close that these are accurate numbers. Now, what we do is we actually track all of that stuff separately on a spreadsheet, we track it right here. So you can see my cost per lead actually on the month is $14.69, whereas Facebook thinks it's $23.04. Okay, so this is, this is why we need to you know, track that. Now, it, it is 95% accurate, but it does under-report. So, and we also get leads from some other places, so there may be a couple of those in there, but this is why we validate that data, and we know that we have the sales which are not showing up on this column right here, all right? So, now that I know that my campaign's about break even and I'm not seeing sales data, what I have to do is make decisions to try to increase the entirety of the whole thing, to try to get the whole thing up, so that it'll run long enough to where hopefully that data starts tracking through. We're working with our tech team right now to try to figure out what may be preventing that pixel or that custom conversion from firing properly on that page. So we got to investigate that. But in the meantime, we don't want to let a good thing go. So we're going to keep looking at ways to scale this. So when we're looking at that, this is part of our optimization framework. We're now on step three, which is to sort and analyze. Now, what I want to do is I first want to look at my campaigns. I always look at my campaigns from the bottom line, which is this number right here, because this is the total across all of my campaigns. Now, what most people will do is they'll look at their ad sets first, and they optimize on ad set levels or even ad levels before looking at the campaign level and the entirety of the campaign. Now, what happens is, is you're going to have a whole litany of different results across these different ads and ad sets that you're running, ranging anywhere from no results at all, all the way to killer results. And what happens is, is those results blend down to the bottom line. Now, the secret to pro media buying and getting scale is trying to get your bottom line to work with as much stuff up here as possible because that's what actually gives you scale and volume. So it's not about getting all of your ads to be within a certain number. Like if your KPI for your cost per sale is 10 bucks, your goal is not to get all of your ads to $10. Your goal is to get a big old fat campaign that averages to $10 on the bottom line. Now what may happen in reality is you may have some ads that are giving you $25 sales, but you got others that are giving you a $3 sales. So what most people will do is they will cut those $23 sales thinking, hey, that's over 10 bucks. I gotta get rid of that. But they're neglecting that volume effect and how that gets them sales and their other sales are pulling the average down. And, that, and thus, they're actually inadvertently removing their scale when they could keep it there. I see Justin Brooke talking about this all the time. Um, it's, a, it's a novel concept for most. But you really, really need to look at that bottom line first. So you start by sorting and analyzing here. Now, if you are in KPI for your bottom line, then you really only have one decision to make. Do I do something or not? Okay? Um, and if you're already making money and it's profitable, that's the assumption here, then the only thing that you really would want to do is scale or possibly test something else. Right? But you have, you have that freedom of choice. Okay? Now, if this is not in KPI, then what we have to do is we have to go through this sort and, and an analysis process to sort everything by our KPIs. Now, what I like to do is I like to start by filtering everything down to the, the ad sets that are active. And I always like to start by going down to my ad set level first. And I'm gonna look at the big picture, all right? Now I'm looking at like, what is my KPI here? Um, which ones are way out of KPI? So for the sake of this uh, tutorial, we will assume that my KPI is $10 per lead right here, or one of these opt-ins, all right? So now this campaign's doing very, really well. This one's right about at KPI. This one's a little bit over. These ones are doing really poorly according to that uh, KPI that I'm looking for. 
So what we do is we start by going into the ad sets that are giving us the highest costs and we want to look at what ads do we have in there and what are the purpose of these ads. These ads may not serve a purpose of trying to drive leads. In this particular case, this one is actually more of a warm traffic ad. So I'm going to back out of that because I don't want to actually edit that one. We're going to remove that from the equation. So we'll go over here. Now what we want to do here is sort by that cost per result. Now I got a couple of ads in here that it, this one's been turned off. This one's still running. It's very getting very little spend. But you can see we got a variety of different results here. The majority of it being weighted right here and this one's within KPI. These ones are pulling it out of KPI. So if I want to get this thing down to KPI, I could remove these particular ads right here and in theory that should pull it down. Now the average is pretty close. Okay, so I could let that go to get volume. What I may want to do is clip this one and this one right here. So I at least got two in there, a couple of them to rotate around and now hopefully that will pull that back down. That's how we start to get that into KPI. That's the optimization flow that we do to try to get that down. All right, now what we've done is we've removed losers, okay? So we're looking for all the stuff that's clearly out of KPI. We wanna remove that, things that have spent, haven't had any leads at all, um, things that have overspent and are way outside of our KPIs. We're gonna remove all of those losers from the campaign. And then what happens is, is these losers have budgets that are attached to them typically. So step five of the framework then is to take those budgets and reallocate them to the ad sets that are within KPI. So we're just shifting the budget from something that we turned off that was a loser and we're shifting it into something that was clearly a winner in this initial test that we're running right here. So we're just kind of uh, reallocating the assets, optimizing the campaign, and what that will do then is that's how you quickly take something from where you start and you optimize it and get down into KPI. So you have to know your numbers, then you have to validate those numbers so you know the decisions that you're making here are accurate or not. Then you sort and analyze by your data, remove your losers, reallocate the budgets to the winners. Right now, once you've done that across your entire campaign, you've basically done all of your optimization work that needs to be done in a 24 hour period. The last thing that you do in this six step formula is to determine what you're gonna test next because we all wanna improve everything. We don't know exactly where your results are here, but you never wanna be satisfied even if you are making good money. So based on all of this stuff that you're looking at, you're gonna determine, all right, well, what do I wanna do next? Well, if I take this active filter off, one of the things that we've done in here, and I'll just give you some examples, I've got this campaign right here that we launched that is not running right now. All the ad sets are uh, inactive. And that's because we ran a whole bunch of tests to these audiences with an initial piece of creative and none of those creatives hit within our KPI. So we optimized off the campaign and now we're actually in production with other ads to test other ad creative idea because that creative did not hit the mark across all the testing that we did with it. Okay, so that's why everything is really you know, circumstantial with what you're doing inside of your account. It's all based on what's happening in reality, what your specific numbers are, what market you're in, uh, the various steps that you took before you got to this point, um, any particular nuances to your business model. That's where most like courses and things fall apart is right here at this, at this stage, right? Because a course can show you, here's how you set up an ad. Here's how you write a good ad. Here's some examples of stuff. Um, Here's how a, a general way about going about doing this stuff. But where things fall apart is when you get stuck in, what do I do in my specific situation? What do I do right now with what I've got going on? And a course simply can't accommodate for that. It just isn't built that way. So what we've done at academyofadvertising.com is we've put together ways to help people get the answers to their specific questions that are going on in their campaigns so that they can get past that hump and be able to scale it. It, it, it takes 
a multitude of people. It takes people with experience that have been through these things to know what strategies, tactics, um, little tricks and tips work to get to those next levels. You know, we've managed as much as $150,000 in one day in ad spend. So when you're at that level and you're, and you're managing all this stuff across all these campaigns, you have to do things a lot differently than you do when you're running at $100 a day. And so we've been through all those strategies and we know how to make all that stuff work. And for the right person, we can actually guarantee your results with your ads. I put together a little uh, a little page that will explain all that stuff to you. If that's you know some place that you're at right now, you're you're running ads and you're getting stuck with you know not sure what to do to make in making these decisions and being able to scale to that next level, we can help you with our strategies and I'll, I'll actually guarantee it and stand behind it. So what I've done is uh, I'm going to put a link in the comments below. You can go and check that out. Um, it'll take you over to a page where you can, you can get this information, you look at it, see if it's a good fit for you or not. And if it is, we'd be happy to help you make these decisions inside of your campaign and be able to work through all the stuff that needs to happen to optimize and ultimately scale something and keep it profitable at really high spend amounts. All right, so if that's something you're interested in, check out the comments. To Victor Belong Spoils, this is Jason Horan.